in Stalag 17, there was a, a soldier, I, I, I think it was American, that was brought in that had been, he had been escaped, oh no, he had been on the run for a long time. Yeah, he was an escape artist. And, uh, well, the, but they finally caught him and brought him to your camp, right? After they'd interrogated him, trying to find out all about, like, the French underground. They were trying, so they interrogated him for a long time, and they brought him to your camp, and he was about dead? No, he wasn't about dead. He, but we had to, he was up to be killed, and we had a, what the cold of night taught it. It was just a little, I think it just had one hole. I never did use it. And uh, at the end of the barracks, in fact, they, they had a kind of a porch as you went in the front door. And uh, you'd come in the door this way and the, and the one holder would be over here, the other side of the main door going into the barracks. Well, each barracks was in two compartments. They had, uh, <coughs> we had 32A and 32B, and in between them, it was all one building. And in between them, they had what they called a washroom. And both sides used it. But, uh, so we made a deal. We wouldn't use our night toilet. We'd store food in it if uh, if we saw it. was lucky enough to get a Red Cross parcel and the, and the Germans didn't stab the cans. They'd miss one. We'd put that food down in the, we dug a tunnel at the bottom of the, the hole at the bottom of the Inside, in, in the toilet hole mm -hmm. that you didn't use. Why would the Germans stab your cans? So we couldn't store them. And so you'd have to escape. You'd have to eat them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had to eat them quick. So they wouldn't keep. Okay, so you. Uh, and so they brought this old boy in. I can't think of his name. Smith or White or something like that. They called him the ghost. We put him down there. We had a tunnel. We dug it quite a ways back. And he stayed in that tunnel. He wasn't by himself. We had a couple of Ger uh, Russians officers. That we had a, a 20 holder, we called it, that we used in the daytime. A latrine 20 holder? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Germans would bring Russians in to clean it out. They used it, they called it the honey wagon. They'd pump out the pit and spread it on the farms for fertilizer. So they used human manure for the farm? And they'd, uh, they'd bring in Russians in there and, with a couple of guards. and All them guards was woman crazy, I guess. So the Americans had jumped, gang up around the guards to see them pictures of their women. And they were always glad to show a picture of their women. And while they were doing that, we'd swap uniforms. And uh, when they went out, there'd be a Russian or two stayed in with the American on the with Americans and a Amer couple of Americans would go out in Russian uniform and then they'd escape or try to. They never did make it. Then they'd bring them back. Then we'd have too many men. <coughs> so they they hit a couple of Russians in there too. And uh, we got that, uh, I, I think, we abandoned the Russians. In fact, I think they found out they were student pigeons. But 
we got that American back to the United States, he made the, he made a lot of the conventions. Mm -hmm. So he he hid in that unused urinal. Mm -hmm. Did he hide there until when you guys left the camp? He snuck out later. I mean, how did he get? No, he went with us. They didn't. They'd get up and down. Yeah. <clears throat> Things are messed up. They left. What they call the repats didn't march with us. They couldn't. Yeah, incapable. So they left them in the camp. So they didn't know who went and who didn't. Okay. The the paperwork kind of got messed up at that point. So yeah. he just kind of came out of the hole and marched, kind of yeah. incognito with you guys. Yeah. Now there was a. He took the place of one of the repats, I guess. 